This opening sequence was shot with the Moza Slypod Pro, Fujifilm X-T4, and Viltrox autofocus lenses. Let's take a closer look at the Moza Slypod Pro to see if it earns a place inside your production equipment suite. So let me try and show you guys some practical ways I actually use this. Funny enough, um, I actually don't use the tripod mounts very often. Almost every time I've used this, and I'm probably going to be using this, unless it's for a staged shot where I've got full control, a lot of times I'm out where there's a bunch of moving parts, I'm in tight spaces because I'm primarily automotive. I actually shoot it handheld and I will stabilize it against my shoulder and then sort of pull cue, hold it from right here and stabilize it against something else in the vehicle that's rigid like a seat window seal, door frame, something like that. So I'm gonna flip around and show you guys how I do that. Press and hold to power it on so we're ready to go. Camera's on. I've got IBIS turned on. This is the Fuji X-T4, by the way. Both of these are what I'm using for this shot and what I'm recording myself on. I'm gonna try and stabilize myself, make sure I know where my up and my downs are. Stabilize the rear against the shoulder. The front's going to stabilize against the seat. I'm going to give it a click up and up and up until it starts moving. Go about three clicks up and that's where I want it to be. And this is so much better than a digital zoom because you get that parallax effect. The, the movement of different focal planes moving past each other, different, different objects, I should say at different focal, or yet, different objects at different focal planes moving past each other. It's really gonna make your video stand out a whole lot more than just relying on a digital punch in only. How's it looking in here? How's it looking? How's it looking? First video in the new, really the whole house, uh, office, studio, whatever makes me sound cooler, right? That's what this is. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's take a quick look I'm, this is not going to be a technical channel, technical video, but just some bare bones stuff. It comes with a rotating, you can move it around whichever kind of way you want to. Feels like a fluid head, the way it has constant and smooth resistance. A couple of uh, adjustment knobs. You can pretty much put this in any position you want, including even it being canted back just a little bit. There's another adjustment so you can rotate it around. You can flip the tripod side and the ball head side around. So if you want your controls on the other side, you can do that. Nine times out of 10, because I'm working in such tight quarters, I'm not even putting a gimbal on it. I'm just doing IBIS and a little bit of post stabilization because again, most of the time I'm hand holding this whenever it's actually on a tripod and mounted or even better yet, dual mounted <clears throat> because there are two tripod mounts and on each of those two mounts you get a little bit of quarter 20 and then the bigger I think it's three eighths but you get four mounting holes per side but there's two so if you want to mid mount it and then counterbalance mount it or if you wanted to what I often do when I do mount it is I will mount it on this point and then back here I'll flip one of these up and hang a bag or more often than not just hold on to the back of it to give it some counterbalance because this thing is pretty heavy uh, you do have about 22 inches of travel and as it is traveling it does it does make a little bit of noise capture audio separate i guess uh, that's kind of the price you pay for something that's this cheap for what it can do it's carbon fiber and it is super compact, super, super compact. Packs down just like a monopod. 
It's moderately heavy, but not crazy for what it can do. The amount of noise I believe is acceptable. A lot of people took great issue with it. If you're trying to capture audio on camera and video at the same time, you're going to hear the tripod, monopod. I'm gonna probably keep saying that. You're gonna keep hearing the slypod, right? But if you have the capability of capturing video and audio separate, do that or add some Foley. So as you can see, it is carbon fiber. Something I noticed, I was one of the original backers of this Slypod Pro when it was on one of the GoFundMe Indiegogo platforms, right? I funded it, I paid, I think it was 450 for an early bird discount. It went all the way through and it said, yay, we met our goal plus some, that we're getting ready to ship. And so a couple of months went by. I then went and looked up Slypod Pro, why, why, why am I not getting this thing? And I found it on a Google search on the other. So I don't know if it went Indiegogo or if it went uh, GoFundMe first, but it went one of those first. And after it had been fully funded, they started a second campaign for the same item. So they did back to back crowd pre-funding, which indicates to me that there's probably a limited number of these actually manufactured in the wild. So I don't know how many of these we're going to actually be able to get our hands on because B and H showed it whenever I ordered. Because by the way, I canceled. I'm not getting back to back pre funded, and you say you're going to ship it and then you're going to make me wait another three to six months while you're doing a second round of crowdfunding. It's a $450 item. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'll just wait till it's actually out because at that point in time, I had doubts it was even going to come out. But I do have it now. B and H showed it whenever I've ordered this about a month ago to be a special order, which means most likely B and H doesn't actually have their hands on it. They'll take the order and then push it over to Moza for them to process it and ship it out. And so I went ahead and ordered through Amazon because their customer service is unbeatable. And I knew if I had a problem with Moza themselves, Amazon would do me right and make everything good. Let's take a peek at this very basic tripod. I mean, it's the, the, the legs on this thing. Come on, Fuji. Don't, don't make me look bad. I got two Fujifilm X-T4s, right? Because the first one was doing so good. And everyone's like, oh, the focus sucks. Well, my focus is fine. And here we are, Fuji. Here we are with you struggling. Uh, <laughs> but you can fold this down to be kind of a... a uh, it doesn't actually do any grip action, but it kind of looks like a Dr. Octopus deal going on here. That does allow me to kind of get a little bit further leverage down whenever I'm hand stabilizing. Most of the time, I'm either gonna have it as a tripod whenever I'm setting it up, or I'm going to fold two of the legs down completely and leave one up just enough for me to get my hand in here so that I can operate the up and down switch, which is right here. This moves, by the way, you can position this however you'd like. You have a USB-C, charging port down here. The way this thing works is if you press and hold up, it goes at maximum speed. If you press and hold down, it goes at maximum speed, but it's like it's stair-stepping all the way up to like, let's say zero is not moving. And then you go up one, up two, up three, up four, up five, up six, up seven-ish uh, levels of speed that you can control. There may be more than that. But whenever you want to go down, once you, so it, it'll go all the way up and then stop itself when it can't go anymore. So you press down once and it's not going to do anything. You're going to have to, it's going to pretty much be stuck or remember that it was at a certain level of speed. So if you clicked up seven times, you're going to have to click down seven times and then once more to get it to start coming down. And then you can keep on clicking and change your speed. But for instance, let me show you, let me show you, right? I'm going to press and hold up all the way up, right? So it's all the way up. I'm gonna start pressing down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's starting to slow roll. So we've got to where it'll let us start going down now. It's very slow. And then I can go a little faster, faster. Feels like there's about 10 levels. So now it's all the way down, 
I'm gonna start pressing up. I had to press it seven times to get it to start going up. So that's just kind of a nuance of dealing with it. Also, if you have, if it's up, let's say this is one, two, three. If you start pressing down, it just backs it off of the speed. It doesn't automatically come to a halt, which I do like that. It's still going up. It's so slow, I didn't even notice it. And it'll go way slower through the app. You have so much more control through the app. But as far as just throwing something up, semi-hand holding or doing a single tripod maneuver, the, the controls on here are just fine. Whenever you turn it on, there's no additional button you have to press to put it into Bluetooth pairing mode for the app. It's always looking for your phone. It's always looking for the app. So just flip the app on. It hasn't dropped. And all the functions have been working properly with the exception of when I got this product, it was still on like firmware version like one, like initial release. And it was not compatible with the app. It linked in the app, but it said to use the app, including the new functions, which I tried basic, like up and down, that didn't work either. To use the app, I had to update the firmware. To give you guys an idea of how poor the firmware update support on this is, Moza themselves include in the instructions that if the firmware fails to tr continue trying until it completes, which means they know it's going to fail. It's not like, Hey, the once, you know, a one in a million, one in a thousand chance of something failing and you just try it again, or the app prompts you to try it again. No, like it'll go to 1% or 2% or 14% or whatever and it will just say update or firmware failed. And you have to close the whole app, turn it off, turn it back on, reconnect it. Did my firmware five or six times. Every time it got a little bit more. Once I got up to 99, I thought I was locked in and good. It failed again. <laughs> I did it one more time and then it finally jumped up to 100 complete. And now I would never update the firmware again. I would never take that chance again, but you have to when you initially get this because for some reason, they're not shipping the SlyPod with the most up-to-date uh, firmware, which further indicates to me that this is the one and only initial production run. So that just kind of further shows me that this is very likely a single run product. So would I recommend it for what I do in tight spaces? This is the only slider that was even an option to me the SlyPod E and the SlyPod Lite, not only could you not get them, they just didn't have enough travel. This actually has enough travel to make a substantial difference in the perspective shift to give a good look, to actually be a meaningful slider for me. I cannot use sliders with tracks. There's two tight quarters. I cannot be restricted to having to use two tripods. I cannot have the restriction of you can't shoot forward because you're going to see the track unless you're using a telephoto or, you know, you can't shoot down because the gearing or the motor is not strong enough to drag it up that slide. This was the only option for me and I'm so happy I got it. Even with the few little quirks about the firmware and the controls being a little odd. Um, I love it. I Love it. I'm having a great time with it. I'm using it on as many shoots as I can. It adds a unique perspective to what I'm shooting and I'm, I'm loving it so far. So for $550, if you are working in tight quarters, you want to be able to go up and down and left and right and at angles, you want something that's portable, relatively lightweight. It seems to be weather sealed pretty well. It's aluminum and carbon fiber. It is a professional level build quality. It can get you into tight spaces that no other slider can. I cannot recommend this enough again, because it's essentially your only option. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe. If you like this kind of content, like this video, if you liked it and drop me a comment, if you have any questions about this video or want me to cover something in an upcoming video. Thank you again so much. Y'all have a great day.